coming to you live from the Mediaplex in downtown Windsor. This is a presentation of St. Clair College Journalism. Good evening. I'm Siddharth Krishna, and you're watching Mediaplex News Now. St. Clair College is taking steps to limit student and faculty travel amid growing concerns over the coronavirus. The college is cancelling all out-of-country field trips and any trips that are outside of this region will need special approval in order to proceed. This travel restriction is in effect until further notice. Canada has a total of 67 confirmed cases but there are none so far in winter. The college met for a town hall today at the main campus and Amodin was there. S. Wajid Ahmed made an appearance at St. Clair College main campus earlier this afternoon to give an update on the virus and how to keep yourself protected and safe. The press conference was held in Sportsplex with around 100 people in attendance who were eager to find out more information and ask relative questions about the spread of the virus and more. Dr. Ahmed gave his suggestions on how to avoid the virus. So the best and easiest precaution that everyone can is hand washing, as trivial as it may sound, but uh, it protects you from not only just for COVID-19, but from any other respiratory or even enteric viruses that are circulating in the community. Appropriate hand washing, making sure that you're doing it with uh, hot water and soap or warm water and soap, or with alcohol-based hand sanitizer with 15 to 20 minutes of contact time, it uh, gets rid of uh, most of the germs that, uh, that can infect you. The virus has had little impact in Windsor as of yet, but Ahmed suggests using precautions and keep yourself clean to avoid any symptoms of the disease. I'm Amo Dillon, Mediaplex News. Now let's head over to Kayla Tanowski, where she is standing by with an early look at the weather. Kayla? The rain has stopped and tonight it will drop to minus three with the wind chill. Stay tuned and I'll be back a little later in the show with our three-day forecast. Sid? First Nations students and professors walked out of class last Wednesday in solidarity with Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs. Patrick White is in the studio to give us more information. First Nations students and professors are sending a message of disapproval to the federal and provincial governments. They argue that the coastal gas line pipeline project and RCMP presence on Wet'suwet'en territory violates a Supreme Court ruling. Clouds began to break up last Wednesday as David Pitawanaquat gave the opening remarks at a U Windsor faculty walkout in solidarity with Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs. But yet, yeah, what is happening across Canada and the United States has been the status quo for over 200 years. Pitawanaquat is referring to a decades-long pushback in Wet'suwet'en territory against developments that hereditary chiefs say pose a threat to their cultural heritage and the environment. Most recently, this pushback has been against the Coastal Gas Link Pipeline Project. An environmental engineering student and president of the Native Student Alliance says it's possible to live in harmony with the land. Recognizing that we are all people of this land and that we all owe our lives to it and that we need to protect it. And then a joint statement from the BC Ministry of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation and the Office of the Wet Sweatin said, on the Coastal Gas Link project, the parties engaged in direct discussions and explored means to come to a resolution. The province agreed to provide further information on the project. All parties at the table recognized that the differences relating to the Coastal Gas Link project remain. An Indigenous law professor and founding member of the activist group, I Don't Know More, provided her input on the draft agreement struck last week in British Columbia. We need to continue pressuring Canada to honor the Dalgamook decision, which is a Supreme Court decision. The Dalgamook decision is at the heart of the current draft agreement between Wet Sweat and Hereditary Chiefs and the British Columbia Senior Ministers. The 1997 Dalgamook Gizdawa ruling affirmed that the BC provincial government has no right to extinguish Indigenous peoples' rights to ancestral territories, the legal validity of oral history, and clarified that it is the government's duty to consult with Indigenous peoples on any projects affecting their territory. Ahead of Sunday's International Women's Day, a group of local creative women had the opportunity to share their stories and speak about their art. Esther Arayinbo reports. Authors and publishers came together yesterday to support and encourage each other. They lead conversations about their crafts and celebrated the accomplishments of women. 
host Vanessa Shields expresses why she decided to bring these women together. I just wanted to get a, a group of wonderful, creative uh, local women together to talk about their art, um, talk about if their um, identity and, and their art is connected and how sort of being a woman plays into that. Janet dixon Snaden, one of the participants, shares her excitement about being a woman and listening to other creative women. This was just fantastic that we were able to be here tonight to hear the different writers and to hear um, their, to them share their experience in their creative experience, but not only that, just how they day to day live as creative women. And I think the more and more that we do that as women to women, the better all of us uh, are going to be. Grisant Waits was there and points out how both genders can work to be valued. I don't want to take anything away from, from what women have to go through to make it in this world. But if we start focusing on what we share and work from that instead of what separates us, then um, I think everybody would be in a better place. The panel discussion focused on women addressed as she and her sharing their experiences as creative women in the world, its challenges and how they can overcome hurdles and improve themselves. For Mediaplex News, I'm Esther Araoibo. It's no secret there's a homelessness crisis in winter, but as Nadia Butler reports, one local woman is trying to make one difference, one bag at a time. Local resident Christine Cook retired from her city job five years ago and decided to use her passion for helping the community towards helping people in need. Out where I live on the east side, Walmart has three or four people that live in the parking lot in their vehicles, you know. So. Cook decided to make it her personal mission to fundraise money, collect donations, and personally deliver goods to those who can't afford the basics. I just started collecting like motel um, samples saying to my friends, you know, like if you go to the motels, get this. I've Cook started one. making what she calls blessing bags, handing them out to people 100 at a time. She puts shout outs on Facebook for donations and collects coupons for stores all over the city. Her house and car are packed to the brim with discounted items she has found around town, buying products in bulk when she sees a good deal. Uh, we usually like pull up in front of the mission or street help because those that's where a lot of people frequent. And we just pull up and say, you know, anybody want a blessing bag? And they come up and within minutes, they're gone. Cook and recently started her latest fundraising campaign online, an entertaining online virtual duck race. She charges $10 an entry, splitting the winnings 50-50 between one first place winner and those in need, filming the race live on Facebook. So I'll say, okay, the first prize is 200 the second prize is one of the donations, and yeah, I, f I fill 40 spots. Cook says that she would like to start a GoFundMe page and buy a building of her own to run the yet-to-be-named organization. She also says it's not always what you buy that makes a difference. Is It takes a simple smile or, you know, to just ask somebody, you know, how is your day? I, You know, you might be struggling, but I'm here if you, you know, <laughs> this brings tears to my eyes. For Mediaplex News, I'm Nadia Butler. The game of chess demands that players think ahead. This week, students around Windsor Essex use their brain power at an annual competition that could lead to the entire Youth Chess Championship. Agnes Wu was watching the action. The 22nd annual Windsor Chess Challenge killed at the Cielo Club in Old Castle on Tuesday and Wednesday. This is one of the largest chess events of its kind in the southwestern Ontario, bringing students from all levels together from more than 80 schools. We have about 1,400 players most years, and it's a two-day event held in either late February or early March. Chess is wonderful for students because it teaches math, it teaches thinking, it teaches planning. And studies have actually shown that students who play chess are smarter and they've done the empirical research and it improves their cognitive abilities. So we really want children to play chess. Several schools around the country have very strong chess clubs. Around 5% of players will be invited to the provincial competition. Some students even end up the playing internationally. Chess is like, it's, a, it's something that can challenge me and I like winning 
a lot. And I've been playing chess for a very long time. I've been to uh, many tournaments and represented Canada, for example, the World Youth and or the Pan American Chess Championship. Ali Boy started playing chess when he was five years old, and right now he's 30. Like with the Canadian right system, he is within the top 10. The winner of this year's competition was Sandwich West Public School, and they will go on to the Ontario Youth Chess Championship in Kitchener on April 80 and 90. For Mediaplex News, I'm Agnes Wu. The Capitol Theatre has launched Project Memories, a centennial celebration capturing the movies, music and theatre that has passed through their doors. Dalin Davis was there to bring us this report. The Capitol Theatre opened its doors on December 30th, 1920. Over the course of a century, hundreds of thousands of people passed through those doors to see music, movies, theatres and more. Shalia Wisdom is the executive director who spoke on the event. All in the early 90s when arts groups were looking for a location to perform. And we walked, we, somebody said, why don't you look at the Capitol Theater? And we walked in, there was actually a demolition permit issued on this building. It was in very bad repair. It had those ugly uh, drop ceiling tiles that had water coming down. But you could look up and through the ceiling tiles, you could see the beautiful ceilings that you see now in the Capitol Theater. The Capitol Theater is celebrating its one year anniversary with Project Memories. My name is Daylon Davis and you're watching MediaPlex News. The city of Windsor is set to begin phase two of its major reconstruction of Huron Church Road. Beginning April 1st, the 4.8 million project will completely rework the stretch between Morden Road and Poole Avenue. Just last year, the city finished phase one and business owners are not quick to forget the impact. Madeline Maizak has more. It's a typical day at Fred's Farm Fresh. But last spring, things looked a lot quieter for the local market. So when they closed the expressway and they closed Northway, uh, that one affected us quite a bit. In a three-month period, uh, we were down in sales for about $70,000. And then we ended up you know, laying off a few people, sending people home early and things like that. So it does affect quite a bit. Bozide said he is concerned construction this spring will impact his business once again. The traffic moved very, very slow. So I, I'm sure that people, when they came, they saw that, they said, you know what, I'm going to take an alternative route or go someplace else. I'm not going to get caught up in that mess. Typical construction occurs for 12 hours a day, but the noise bylaw exemption granted by City Council on Monday will help speed up the project. Contractors will be able to work 24 hours a day in order to complete the project by July 1st. From our end of things, uh, obviously the work has to get done and we try to do it in such a manner that it has the least impact. We'll have information signs out in uh, both directions uh, advising the motorists how to get to the various businesses that have been affected so they can, uh, they can reroute themselves and get into those properties. It will involve the complete removal and reconstruction of the road including the curbs, the sidewalks, uh, the road itself and the street lights. The City of Windsor has applied for a grant from the Ministry of Transportation which will allow them to begin Phase 3 of the project. That includes the Huron Church and College Avenue intersection, as well as the roadway between Gerardo Ave and Tecumseh Road West. They aren't expecting to hear back about that until March. However, I've heard if they are successful, they won't begin the project until 2022. For Mediaplex News, I'm Madeline Mazak. Social media isn't just a way to keep up with friends. It's also a tool more and more businesses are using to reach their customers. Sierra Ross joins us live in the studio to explain. From a basement business to being one of the most successful vintage and resale storefronts in Windsor, the boys behind Low End Vintage Shop are the poster children for the use of social media as a launch pad for small businesses. Two years ago, a pair of former engineering students started selling their old clothes on Instagram, successfully using the platform to grow their business from online to a storefront on Palisher Street in downtown Windsor. Now it's their full-time job. I was really focused on school, but as this started growing, I kind of like shifted focuses and it was a little hard to really balance both. So I ended up going to St. Clair for uh, pre-health because I wanted to be a nurse, thought it would work out like that, but 
this kind of kept taking off and I just kind of committed to this. So, Using only Instagram and keeping clothes in their basement, their followers grew steadily to more than 7,000 people. Despite having no experience on how to run a business, they were able to transition from an online store to having a successful storefront in a prime winter location. It was just like to a point where like it was too much to sometimes put on Instagram. Like we do like 30 to 50 posts a day. Um, so then, you know, like I said, at the one of the pop-ups, a bunch of people were like, yo, why don't you just open a store with all the inventory you have? So we ended up doing that on Sandwich. Even though they now have a storefront, Instagram is still a huge part of their marketing and connection to customers. Success stories like Low End are inspiring other local businesses to focus on social media. Places like Coffee Exchange in downtown Windsor are now hiring someone spe specifically for social media marketing in hopes of tapping into a new customer base. Time to head back outside to see what the weather holds for us for the next three days. Kayla, do you have any good news for us? Good news and bad news. The good news is it's above freezing and the bad news is winter isn't over for another week. Let's have a look at our three day forecast. Wednesday, there's a chance of showers with a high of seven. Thursday, again, periods of rain with a high of 10. And Friday, more rain and a chance of showers with a high of eight. I'm Kayla Ternowski and that's it for me from the corner of University in Victoria. Back to you, Sid. Gaming is becoming a huge industry and new releases are big news. Ryan Percy reports. $120 billion is a lot of money. And according to Nielsen's super data, that's the value of the video game industry. And just like movies, there are hot new game releases coming out every single month. Since we're at the beginning of March, let's touch on a few upcoming releases which might pique your interest or at the very least let you know what your kids or friends are talking about. Ever crack open a Where's Waldo book growing up? Like playing I Spy on long car trips and not just as a time waster? Then you may love Hidden Through Time. Coming out on Thursday, it's a game where you're given a scene from a different time period and follow cryptic clues to track down characters and objects within it. But the two biggest releases are both planned for March 20th and have gained a sort of friendly rivalry between fans on social media. The first is Animal Crossing New Horizons for the Nintendo Switch. The fifth title in the main series and eighth overall in the franchise, the new game will see players taking on their role as villagers on an island. After buying a dream trip from the frugal tanuki Tom Nook, the players left on a deserted island to enjoy themselves. You can craft items to decorate this island and turn it into a paradise of your choosing as you attract all manner of anthropomorphic animal acquaintances to join you. But if your friends aren't into Animal Crossing but are picking up a game, it's probably going to be the new installment of one of gaming's most famous and infamous franchises, Doom. The 13th game in the series, Doom Eternal, sees the Doom Slayer once again pitted against the forces of hell in a brutal battle of life and death for the sake of humanity. But three days after that, the newest installment in a series almost every gamer has been joking about for years comes out. Almost 13 years after the last no game's cliffhanger off. ending, Half-Life Alex is Completely back and in diving into Completely. virtual reality. Players take on the role of fan favorite Completely. character Completely. Alex between the events of Half-Life and Half-Life 2 as she tries to survive after humanity's fall to the Combine. But whether you plan to battle the forces of evil or sit back and relax by the beach while you pay your debt to a magical raccoon dog thing, the choice is yours. Either way, have fun and game on. Windsor Google Developers Group, or GDG, focuses on technology coming out of Google. Then meeting this week sparked interesting conversation. Victor Nee was there. Artificial intelligence, as known as its AI, is a new technical science to study and development serious uh, method and uh, technicals, and the application systems for stimulating and extending the human intelligence. On February 25th, the EPI Center at the University of Windsor was a makeup for everyone interested in both AI and big data. Big data is the analysis of information to reveal patterns, trends, and links especially around the human behaviors and interactions. GTG Windsor organizes the event and then focuses on software development such as Google Machine Learning, Google Web Technologies, and Android. Eli Ashraf says this was a night where they bring some people from industry around the area to come and talk about big data machine learning. AI is a new hotness. It's definitely a technology that's in demand. 
you know, anyone that has skills doing it, machine learning, anything to do with big data, or training models, implementing models, getting into the production, anything of that sort. Uh, you know, there's a lot of demand right now in, in uh, IT. Noro Eckholt wants to find a job using AI. I've personally been always interested in AI and big data and how important it is for the future and even now um, how companies are using it um, to help you know, grow their companies and expand on things. You know. um, so here I'm really hoping to maybe expand my own learning because AI is really interesting to me and I hope to pursue a career in AI hopefully when I grow up or when I get a job. So yeah, I'm pretty sure here um, I'll learn a lot. GTG Windsor meets about once a month. Check the Eventbrite website for their next meeting. For Mediaplex News, I'm Victor Nye. It was International Women's Day and who better to talk about that than Sierra Ross. The NHL took International Women's Day and ran with it. The organization has taken the initiative to open up more opportunities for women to take up space in the sports world, recognizing the major gap that exists. In the first of many examples, women made NHL history Sunday with the first all-female broadcast team during the Flames vs. Golden Knights matchup. Leah Hextall, granddaughter of NHL Hall of Famer Brian Hextall, made her debut in her first play-by-play -play assignment. Hextall penned an open letter about the historic opportunity, with Tara Sloan highlighting one of the most important quotes in a tweet. Quote, Some people will see Sunday's broadcast as a gimmick, but every woman involved has earned the right to be here. Each of us has persevered in a world where we weren't always welcomed. End quote. Damn straight. The progress doesn't stop there. there. There are currently zero women employed as one of the 200 head assistant video or goalie coaches in the NHL. The NHL Coaches Association has launched a program for female coaches to be trained in an effort to close the opportunity gap. Finally, the new Seattle administration will take preemptive steps to ensure equal opportunity for women by prioritizing diversity. One of the most notable steps, the historical hiring of the NHL's first professional scout, Cami Granato. For Seattle to actually have that foresight to think, you know, it doesn't have to be a male-dominated job. It doesn't have to be only males. For them to give me the opportunity, they've really set sort of, a, you know, a little bit of a standard for there are women that are qualified. For women like myself looking to make a career within the NHL, it's inspiring to see the effort that is being put towards creating those opportunities for us. Tune into my podcast with Garrett Fedor to hear more about women in sport. That's your end-to-end -end report for the week. I'm Sierra Ross. This show wouldn't be complete without some weird news from the weirdest places. Here is Zachary Below with the latest. Hey viewers who ended up staying to the end of the show, boy do I have a treat for you. Time for some weird news. Do you like going to the beach to collect seashells? What about Lego? According to BBC America, for nearly 20 years, Lego, that's right, the Danish toy brand, has been washing ashore on beaches in Cornwall, England. They began washing ashore when a cargo ship containing Lego sank in the ocean. Okay, so list of things to do when I get home. Homework? Book a trip to England. Looks like crabs isn't the only concern for this beach. It's time to go to no man's land, otherwise known as Florida. Let's hear it. Florida man, Florida man. On today's edition of Florida Man, we dive into the world of Florida ape. That's right, hundreds of apes in the Sunshine State are said to be carrying herpes. According to the Washington Post, there are at least 400 monkeys carrying the disease. Humans are also at risk for infection, but only if you've been bitten, scratched, or spit on. So don't get into contact with the apes, because their herpes may spread faster than the coronavirus. Sticking with the Florida theme here, are you worried about getting coronavirus in your drugs? Seriously, drugs, and you're worried about coronavirus. A Florida police station in Atlantic Beach wants to check your new batch of drugs and test it for the infamous coronavirus. According to WFLA-TV, the police department posted on their Facebook page that if you have recently bought illegal drugs, to bring them in and get tested. Imagine saying, can I have my drug, I mean my friend's math back, please? That's the weirdness for this Tuesday. You can't make this stuff up. I will be bringing you the weirdest news found on the internet in two weeks. Until then, enjoy your March break. For Weird News, I'm Zachary Balog. Chrissy Cochrane is not exactly the official singer, songwriter of the media plex, but we like to think so. She dropped by to share a new song from a new album. Let's enjoy. I don't know why I do the things I do 
gotta stop Think it through When I was a kid I never did give a damn about a thing If it wasn't a man But hungry love didn't last We were too young, too fast And every time I laid in a stranger's bed It went to my head, went to my head Just having myself a ball Wasn't thinking with my head at all But these days I don't need a thing I got my soul and a diamond ring I'm working for my living I'm alive so I've got to sing Hungry love didn't last We were too young, too fast Every time I laid in a stranger's bed It went to my head, went to my head Chrissy Cochrane's new album, Heirloom, is available everywhere. Are you interested in checking out what we have to offer? Join us on March 21st for a college-wide open house from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can take a tour, meet faculty and students, learn about student services, explore financial aid options, plus win great prices. We will even buy the coffee for you. Hope to see you there. And thanks for tuning in. I'm Siddharth Krishna and you have been watching Mediaplex News Now. Mediaplex News Now is a production of the St. Clair College Journalism Program.